Gases exchange in bony fish. Fish live in water, and it is from this water that they obtain oxygen for respiration and release carbon four oxide. The breathing system of a bony fish, such as tilapia, consists mainly of the mouth, or also known as the buccal cavity, gills, and the opacular cavity within which these gills are contained. Bony fish have eight gills. The gills are the organs that are used for gases exchange. So bony fish have eight gills, four on each side of the pharynx. A gill has the following structural features. There is a bony structure known as the gill bar or the gill arc. Arising from this gill bar are numerous thin and slender structures known as the gill filaments. These gill filaments provide the effective surface for gases exchange. Also arising from the gill bar on the opposite side to the filaments are tooth-like structures known as gill rakers. The function of this is to prevent food and any solids present in the water from breaching and damaging the delicate filaments. Now, each gill is an organ. It looks like this. This is a photo of gills. The actual gills, you can see the numerous filaments. There is the gill bar, and also arising from the gill bar, the gill records. Now, each tiny filament, these are the gill filaments attached to the gill bar. Now, running, if you look at the gill bar, see there are blood vessels. The blood vessels coming from the heart, this is a blood vessel bringing blood from the heart, flows through the filaments, it gets oxygenated, then flows out through another blood vessel to the rest of the body. Now each filament has plate-like projections from the surface known as the lamellae that greatly increases the surface area for gases exchange. So here you have the actual gills, see they are red in color with numerous filaments and these filaments actually are arranged in two rows along each gill bar. There is this row and the other row forming a V-like structure. Now this arrangement is important in ensuring that there is maximum contact between the filaments and the water as the water flows through the gill filaments. Now, the gills have specific structural adaptations that enhance gases exchange with the water. These adaptive features are one, the mere presence of the gill bar being bony provides support to the gill records and the filaments. Because the filaments are very delicate, they must be supported. And this support is provided by the bony gill bar. Also, the bony gill bar is carved to provide a large surface area for supporting numerous gill filaments. So the gill bar is not straight. It's actually carved like this. And in this structure, it's able to support many more gill filaments than would otherwise be the case if the, the gill bar was straight. Presence of gill records prevent damage to the filaments so that as the water flows through the gills, as the water is drawn from the mouth into the pharynx, any solid particles are screened out 
by the gear wreckers. Now most of the adaptive features for gases exchange are to be found on the filaments. These filaments are numerous in number. You can see them here. There are so many of them. And in total, these numerous filaments provide a large surface area for gases exchange. The filaments are also quite thin, long and thin, as shown here, long and thin. This increases the surface area to volume ratio for faster rate of diffusion. The filaments do have a thin membrane. There's a thin membrane separating the blood in the filament and the water. So this enables rapid diffusion of gases. Then also each filament has these plate-like foldings known as the lamellae that further increase the surface area for gases exchange. And filaments are highly vascularized. And this can be seen from the red color. The red color of the filaments prove or show that they have a rich network of blood capillaries. These blood capillaries carry away the oxygen that has been absorbed and bring carbon dioxide to the surface for diffusion. In this way, the rich supply of blood vessels maintains a steep diffusion gradient between the water and the gill. Now, how does gases exchange take place? This bony fish. Now let's look at the mechanism. The mechanism of gases exchange in the bony fish. Now, gases exchange involves forcing water into the system and out because the fish obtains its oxygen from the surrounding water. So this water must be drawn into the gas exchange system and then forced out. Now, this movement of water into and out of the fish involves the flow of the mouth cavity and the operculum. Operculum is a flap of tissue that covers the capillaries, that covers the gill chamber on the side of the pharynx of the operculum. So it is a movement of the operculum and the flow of the mouth cavity that force the water into and out of the gaseous exchange system. Now, the movement of water into and out occurs in two stages. That is the ventilation, the provision of oxygen to the gills occurs in two stages. Namely, you have inhalation and exhalation. Now, during inhalation, the flow of the mouth cavity is lowered by muscular contractions. So this flow will be lowered. So if this is the fish, and that is the mouth cavity, so the flow, this is the mouth cavity, the flow is lowered. And when the flow is lowered, the volume in the mouth increases. And when the volume increases, the pressure within the mouth reduces. So as the flow of the mouth cavity is being lowered, the mouth opens, and with the drop in pressure, water is drawn into the mouth cavity. During this time, as the opacular cleft is closed, so water is drawn into the mouth cavity only. Water can only enter through the open mouth cavity, but not through any other opening in the gases exchange system. After water has entered the mouth cavity, then the mouth is closed and the flow of the mouth begins to rise. This rising of the flow of the mouth increases the pressure and the rise in pressure will force water from the mouth cavity and into the pharynx. 
where the gills are located. The part of the pharynx where the gills are located is known as the gill cavity or the gill chamber. So as the flow of the mouth is being raised, water is pushed into the gill chambers and flows over the gills. As the water flows over the gills, gases exchange does take place. Now, during exhalation, during exhalation, the flow of the mouth cavity is raised further and the water that was remaining in the mouth cavity is pushed out into the pharynx. At the same time, the opacula bulges inward. This inward bulging is brought about by the higher pressure of the water compared to the pressure in the gill chamber. So as the opacula bulge inward, the opacula cleft will open. As the opacula cleft opens, water flows over the gills and as the water flows over the gills, gases exchange takes place. Oxygen, which is at a higher concentration in the water, diffuses into the gills, while carbon four oxide, which is in a higher concentration in the blood within the gills, diffuses out into the water. So with the raised mouth, and the operculum having been bulging inward, the cleft opens and the water passes out through the open cleft into the surrounding. So the raising of the mouth cavity floor and the inward bulging of the operculum brings about the exhalation or the forced removal of the water from the gases exchange system. During inhalation, the opacula bulges outward. This lowers the pressure in the pharynx so that together with the raised flow of the mouth, water is pushed into the pharynx and into the gill chambers where gases exchange takes place. Then, because of the drop in the pressure in the gill chambers, the water outside will force the opacula to bulge inward. This will reduce the volume and increase the pressure together with the continued rising of the mouth cavity floor. The rise in pressure will then force the water out of the now open opacula cleft. Now, to ensure that there is maximum exchange of gases between the water and the blood in the gills, there is a countercurrent flow system that has been established between the water and the blood. And in the countercurrent flow system, the blood that is flowing through the gills comes into contact with water that is progressively richer in oxygen. So here we have blood flowing through the capillaries in the gills in the opposite direction to the water that's flowing over the surface of the gills. So as the blood flows through the capillaries, it comes in with a very low concentration of oxygen across the surface of the blood capillary the water has a higher concentration of oxygen so this difference in concentration will facilitate diffusion as the blood flows in the opposite direction it encounters water that is richer and richer in oxygen the difference in concentration will facilitate more diffusion such that there's continuous diffusion of oxygen from water into the blood across the gills filament surface.
so that as the blood flows through the gills, it encounters water that is richer and richer in oxygen. This counterflow system ensures that by the time the blood leaves the gills, it will have almost equal concentration of oxygen as the water that enters the gills. Because the water entering the gills has a relatively high concentration of oxygen. So as the water moves over the surface of the gills, it encounters blood that is deficient, more and more deficient in oxygen. So the difference in concentration greatly enhances the exchange of oxygen through diffusion. The same same concentration gradient that facilitates exchange of oxygen also ensures that carbon-4 oxide diffuses efficiently from the blood and into the water because the blood coming into the gills will have a higher concentration of carbon-4 oxide than the water. So as the blood flows over the gills, it will be encountering water that is more and more deficient in carbon dioxide and this will enhance efficient diffusion of carbon dioxide from the blood and into the blood into the water zone.